Hey there, my name is Mark McCartney and welcome to the What is a Good Life podcast. Over the last two years, I've interviewed over 150 people around this question, not to provide you with the universal answer, but to help you find and define your own answer to this question. On the 32nd episode of the What is a Good Life podcast, I'm delighted to be joined by Bassi Ikpi. Bassi is a Nigerian-born, American-bred writer, ex-poet, mental health and wellness advocate, and memoir procrastinator. Her book, I'm Telling the Truth But I'm Lying, an instant New York Times bestseller, reflects her experience living with bipolar 2 disorder and anxiety. She is currently soft at work on her next book. In this episode, Bassi shares her experiences of navigating life with bipolar 2 disorder and the impact mindfulness has had on her life. We discuss the role a heightened self-awareness has played in terms of being able to afford both herself and others grace, allowing her to connect more with people's humanity and to see beyond the pain, hurt, and fear many people are interacting from. She also shares with us how her creativity and writing affords her the space to observe life from multiple perspectives and the impact that can have on relationships. If you're growing tired of the dichotomous way in which we are judging each other, if you're seeking more nuanced ways of interpreting human behavior, and if you're looking to cultivate more grace and humanity in your life, this episode will open up wider spaces for new perspective in how we relate to ourselves and each other. I found this conversation extremely insightful, so I'm sure you're going to take a lot from this conversation. And if you enjoy this episode, please like, share and subscribe and leave a review on the podcasting platforms as I'd greatly appreciate your support at this stage of my podcasting journey. So without further ado, the 32nd episode of the What is a Good Life podcast. Bassi, thank you very much for joining me on the What is a Good Life podcast today. You may not know this, but you're the only guest so far that has the, the distinction of making me cry before actually having oh, talked to you. No. When I, <laughs> when oh, I no. listen to one of your, I listen to your your poem, uh, apology, apology to my unborn oh. as a, as an upcoming father. Uh, I just thought it was absolutely beautiful. So sometimes oh. guests have got me a little bit misty eyed during the conversation. <laughs> But you've gone all the way before we've even began. <laughs> oh, I want to say thank you, but I'm not happy that you cried. <laughs> I was. It was a very. It was a very gratifying experience. Oh. Look, um, Bassi, I'm. I'm really grateful for you to join me here today on the What Is a Good Life podcast. And as I tend to kick these things off, it's with the question of: Is there a question that you're trying to answer as you move through life? Yes, and it's actually a very basic question. Um, am I going to be okay? That's a question right. that I ask myself very often. Um, and I need to ask myself because of uh, just my mental health and um, some of the things that I have, I don't say things that I've been through because I, I, I don't believe that you go through things. I think that life happens and you just are kind of part of that. But I do check in almost daily, almost sometimes multiple times a day. Are you going to be okay? Are you okay? And because uh, I think that okay is different than like this. Okay is is baseline, you know. Okay right. is is very like is is a very flat line that you can get to as opposed to ecstatic or you know. So if I can get to okay um, and make sure I maintain okay for the rest of my life, then I think I've done well. That's uh, am I going to be okay? Is it's there's a lot to that though, right? Like, like it sounds like such a as you say, it sounds like a simple question, but there's there's so much be behind that. I yeah. I guess could you kind of elaborate on on that becoming a question for you and and how you've come to this point? Well, uh, so I was diagnosed with bipolar two disorder. It's been twenty years now, and. Because of that, because of the precarious sort of state of that, regardless, you could be taking your medication perfectly, you know, see your doctors. I, I work out and, and you know, do other things in order to like help help myself. But there's always a point where it stops working. There's always a point where you have to make another change and make another shift and add this and take away that in order to keep balanced. And my fear has always been that I'm not going to be okay. And that not being okay also comes with the fact that it affects my community. I don't think that I'm an island, you know, uh, to myself. So my well being affects my son, it affects my parents, it affects my siblings, it affects my, my friends, it affects, you know, my, my community. Um, so where my responsibility is, is to do my best. 
there's always a possibility that it's not going to be enough. And I think about my future in those terms where am I going to be okay? Am I going to maintain at the very least an okayness moving forward so that so that things don't fall apart, you know? Yeah. That's sometimes like does that sound like a a lot of responsibility sometime? Like just the when you're aware of the you know, when you're talking about the responsibility to community, to family, to your son, like is is this something that takes up a lot of your a lot of your thought? Um, I wouldn't say it takes I think it's 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 a part of me now. It's 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 yeah. as as natural as getting up in the morning and stretching or yawning when you're tired. Um, I've made it a, I've made it my responsibility to the point where I'm responsible for brushing my teeth and I'm responsible for, you know, these very basic things that other people are are responsible for, but I just have this added responsibility um, that it's not difficult because I understand the benefits and I know what the benefit is and I know the reason why I'm doing it. If I was kind of like, not sure, I'm like, uh, you know, I got to, you know, take care of all these people as though it's a burden. It's not a burden to me because I know that if I don't do that, it's a burden to other people. Right. Yeah. It's, it's really, it's really interesting. I, I think with, when I was in my early thirties, I saw a therapist and experiencing things with anxiety. And I, and I find it really interesting, just the almost the significance that mental health suddenly then ta- and I'm not comparing my experience to your experience you, you know we're all we're all the we're all unique in our own uh, experience of this life but just it's amazing then how much something that I hadn't considered before as central to my life then you know the idea of mental health or even just the awareness and the attention that I couldn't suddenly pay to my life whereas before I was very unaware of kind of any fluctuations um, then all of a sudden it becomes very central to to how I'm how I'm moving through life or what I'm paying attention to. Yeah, um, I actually want to push back on on what you said, which is that um, you don't want to compare my thing to or you're, you don't want to compare. And I think that 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 there isn't necessarily a comparison, but your experience has the same level of importance to you as my experience yeah. has to me. So it's not, I, I would never want you to diminish what you've experienced because, oh, well, this person has it worse. We all have our things and the way that we, the way that we take care of ourselves, we all take care of ourselves in different ways for different reasons. But the, but the idea of taking care of ourselves and wanting to, to, to make sure that we are healthy and whole people it, that that remains the same and part of me wants to change my answer about <laughs> about what's the question because i've got all these other questions that i'm like there's a, there are more questions but um yeah yeah please but please feel um there's no limit to the amount of questions that people uh, <laughs> that people can be focusing on because because my my answer to some of your questions uh was like now i'm thinking my question is am i contributing to my community in meaningful ways? Am I, um, am I making sure that my role in society is a helpful one? Am I, you know what I mean? Like these different questions that I think come from that, like me wanting to be okay to me is a reflection of all these other, all these other questions that I want answered. uh, Or I, I, I feel like I would like to answer in my, in my lifetime. So. And then, so even with that, then how, what's your, what's your experience been with that? Am I contributing in a meaningful way to, to my community? Uh, I think it's ongoing. I think that uh, it's never, it's never just one thing. Um, at one point it was my mental health advocacy where I'm, you know, making sure that I'm talking openly about it in order to give space for other people to speak about it. My book, um, today's a four year anniversary of when my book came out. Um, Congrats. Thank you. Weird accomplishment, <laughs> but thank you. Uh, I think that it shifts. I think that being, I think that raising my son in a certain way is part of that contribution, making sure that he's, you know, a kind person, somebody who, who thinks of others, but is also very cognizant of, 
of of making sure that he's not giving of himself more than more than he can uh, or more than is uh, that is healthy for him. Um, I think that in a way the ways in which we are all able to contribute is by, by being empathetic and kind and also acknowledging that there are times when you cannot be kind and empathetic and being very forgiving of yourself for that grace. Like grace is, is, is the thing that has kept me motivated because I have been afforded a lot of grace from people and a lot of forgiveness from people. Therefore my my responsibility is to make sure that I'm offering that same amount of kindness and grace and forgiveness to others. It's really corny, but <laughs> it's true. No, <laughs> no, oh man, like then, then I'm a, then I'm very, very corny because the moment you said grace, I, I don't know. I just think this is, um, there's something so beautiful to the idea of what you just said there. Look, I, I really want to help people. I really want to be kind to people. But then in the times that I'm not that, that I can be kind to myself or afford myself some grace. And I think this is where some, for sometimes if people, if we don't get to that point where we can afford ourselves to it, we end up kicking the crap out of ourselves because we're human. (laughs) Yeah. Yeah. And you can't give what you don't have for yourself. Yeah. Yeah. Complete, completely. And grace for me has been a huge word in terms of not, can I handle any situation you know in air quotes perfectly but whatever transpires can i can i kind of exhibit some grace in whatever way the grace is is required for the situation yeah it's 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 interesting because so much of i think what hurts us as a society is the fact that we are unable to see the humanity in each other um and when we're yeah. not able to do that, it, it makes it very difficult. When, when, I have like a, a, a love-hate relationship with Twitter specifically because I think that there is a level of unkindness on Twitter that just couldn't possibly uh, exist anywhere else. Like a friend of mine have a joke like these these people would get punched in the face more often if you spoke to if you spoke to anybody yeah, yeah. the way that that you that people feel comfortable speaking to people online um, and at uh, I've lessened my time online unless I'm talking about like television or, or bragging about my son and his soccer career. Um, but <laughs> I, uh, but I've just noticed that if, if, if you look at the ways in which some people are very unkind, um, if you trace it and if you, if you just look just a little bit longer, you see where it comes from. And when you see if when you're able to see where somebody else's hurt comes from, it doesn't mean you subject yourself to it. Like I don't have to be around you, but now I understand that it's not me. It's something else. And I can back away knowing that, that or hoping that you get the help that you need, but also knowing that I'm not the one who needs to provide it for you. You know, I think that there's, there's something about, having one's own difficulties or challenges in life sometimes like even just with their own maybe their own inner relationship where they then go and seek help and and find help and you know talking about this word grace again that I think that's a huge source of being able to afford other people grace as well then yeah you you know like you start to unpack some of your own stuff and even just to realize where some of it's coming from And then you see so many other situations in life in front of you kind of present, maybe not similar as symptoms or, but you you just get hints of it where you're just like, oh God, I, I see what's happening here. You feel, you feel hurt. You know what I mean? Yeah. Yeah. It's, it's funny. I, I call myself the, I ingest, I call myself the bipolar whisperer. Because I can tell, I'll be online and I'll see somebody tweeting a, sp- a specific way, and I'm like, "This person's manic. This is a this is a manic episode." And in the past, I would like, you know, go into their DMs and ask them, you know, "Are you okay? Is there anything that you that's going on?" And nine times out of ten, I'm I'm correct because I I, I my doctors say that I'm self aware to a fault, but I recognize it in myself, and because I recognize it in myself, I'm able to see it in others. Um, just, and not going off topic, but like even for, for someone like Kanye West, um, I'm like, I see, I cannot be angry at this person because I see 
where the illness has is showing up and I see where he's not getting the help that he needs um, in a way that I've been fortunate to get the help that I need. But I also know that <clears throat> if I'm not, if I wasn't getting it there, but I hate the term, but was that uh, there, but for the grace of God, go I, 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 yeah, I yeah. kind of hate that saying. Cause it, it, it feels like, it feels like I'm saying something against the other person, but that's, that's, that's the reality of it. Um, I think that, and I, 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 I feel so Pollyanna about that. I think you got me in the, in the right, like endorphins type of, of, of mood where I'm just like, everything's great. Even though I don't think I have endorphins, I'll be honest with you. I don't think I have endorphins. And I've, I've questioned my doctors about this. I was like, I don't feel great <laughs> when I work out. I just feel like I have to do it. I feel great afterwards, like hours right. afterwards, because I know that I did. Um, I'm sorry, I forgot your question. No, there, you were just, you were reflecting on even just the ability to see, um, you know, maybe even if somebody else was, uh, you know, you're saying the bipolar whisper, and then even just when you're looking at even someone like Kanye West, and you, by the grace of God, almost got the the help that you, that that, that, that was helpful to you, and, and just how that kind of affects your outlook in terms of when you're reflecting on other people's experiences. Yeah, uh, I think what, also what I was getting at is that if we, if there's a, there's a, there's a, there's a self-awareness to see yourself. There's a self-reflection to understand yourself, but then there's also using those things in order to see other people. Um, and, 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 you know, I'm not always the kindest, like I get in bad moods and I, you know, go off sometimes, but I also make sure I apologize or I also make sure that I let the person know that it's not them. It was, it's me. Um, or something that they said uh, activated some something in me. Um, so I, I, it's just more of like a mirroring thing, I think. But but this is really nice. So I think, yeah, and look, it, it resonates with my own opinion. So that's probably why it's really nice. <laughs> but the, this the, this idea, though, that I think one of the the nicest things that I find sometimes is if I can if I can reflect on my own behavior before someone else has to call me out about it. Yeah. And so I'm not saying it like, look, the it, my the bar should be set low so that I just trip all over the place and I'm sloppy as hell, but I get the apology in or, or the acknowledgement in before somebody calls me out on it. But there is something, I think, in in relationships where people, I think we, we get so tense in trying to do the right thing all the time. But there's a huge, I, there's a huge uh, kind of scope for forgiveness and harmony, even in relationship, even when you make mistakes, even yeah. when you're not the nicest. Yeah. If you can explain to somebody, look, look, maybe I'm feeling a bit stressed today. Maybe I'm feeling this today. And this is why I've done this. And I'm sorry about that. Like, and, and in my experience, that has a, a profound effect on relationships without me having to be perfect. Absolutely. Um, one, one of the things that has helped me tremendously over the last couple of years, um, and my former therapist uh, taught it to me or, 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 or brought it to my attention is mindfulness. Just being mindful of where you sit in the world and then being mindful of where other people sit in the world. And, and, and that helps with self-awareness. That helps with um, forgiving yourself. It helps also to be mindful of how other people are, are, are feeling. I think that mindfulness saved my life. Um, hmm. That amount of uh, just being able to, to sit and assess where you are and assess the feelings based on like, okay, where is this coming from? Um, as I said earlier, it takes a little bit more time. Like I can't, I don't have the privilege of just getting up and walking out the door. There's a lot of, there are a lot of things that I need to do in order to make sure that when I walk out the door, I am okay. <laughs> I am presenting yeah, yeah, yeah. my okayness. Um, and that's where mindfulness comes in. There's a lot of like, like a self inventory, like checking, 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 checking. And then there's days where I just don't have it. And it's like, you know what? Today's a day where I'm just going to stay home because I might, uh, I, I don't want to be rude to a cashier because I might yeah. do that, you know? And if I, I always apologize if I'm like, customer service. I was like, before I hang up, I want you to know that I'm not upset at you. I'm upset at the situation. And I apologize if my, I do this all the time. And they're, and they always laugh at me and they're like, it's fine. This is our job. We get yelled at all the time. It's like, yeah, but I don't want to be the reason why you're in a bad mood when you go home. <laughs> yeah. 
there's you know earlier when you mentioned even you brought up Twitter and your experience on that and just wondering where people kind of the lack of humanity that sometimes is kind of uh, displayed there or put on show there like I really think that this you know even from this kind of sequence of words that you're using almost this grace um, and then just humanity and then even this yeah, this idea that you saw like you said just moments ago as well seeing people like you know when you start to pay attention to yourself I think you I think we start to look at other people more closely yeah and I, I don't know there's like a, a combination of those words uh you know grace humanity and even just seeing people I, I think they make a huge difference Absolutely. to and it's not some utopia where we suddenly we all just get along magnificently we can still have conflict or even frustration with the customer servicing but it doesn't have to we don't have to burn all these bridges <laughs> just yeah. because the initial thing has gone awry if you know what I mean yeah it's not uh, one of the things that it's one of the things that disturbs me about I mean in America like the political climate where it went from I disagree with this to and they must all die because of it <laughs> 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 like we're there's there's a, there's a, there are a couple of stops before we get to that. So why why are we there second? Like why why is this the second place we end up? And I think that when you when you look at it again, so many people are hurting, and when they when they find something or someone gives them a reason, uh, and that reason is that person, or the reason why it's difficult for me to do X Y Z. And this is on on all sides. This is not you know. Yeah, I, of yeah. course, I'm 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 very you know, left, but I've seen it on all sides where it becomes, you know what, actually a friend of mine and I were having this conversation about how so much of the thing, uh, so many of the things that we argue about and the ways in which like we kind of like take sides is very religious. And it's, it's people who reject religion in like the traditional form. And I'm not a religious person, but there's something about religion that offers rules and community and so finding rules and community around certain uh, ideologies, I'll say, but then also needing to have like like a, a devil and a god and a hell to to put people in when they when they when they disobey, and then there's a there's a heaven where you're a good person because you're following all the rules of this ideology, and there's no room for you to disagree with any part of it. You can't say I like this. But I don't like that because if you don't like it, you're going to whatever hell we've decided exists in this world. And we were just like talking about these different things and we're like being able to like, this is, this is the, um, the patron saint of that. And this is, you know, going through this list and, and being able to see how the religions, uh, how the religious aspect shows up in some of these things and people not being aware of the gods they've built and the hell they've created to put people in it's i think it's just really interesting that's uh that's a beautiful uh that's a beautiful way of describing it because it? it, <laughs> it, it's, it's almost yeah but but it like it it's like um you know i i grew up uh catholic but um we stopped going to stop going to church um at a young enough age with various uh scandals and everything else that were occurring yeah. at the time yeah and as much as I think, like I have a, I have some sort of sense of a divine or a, some sense of a, a creative force in all of this. Too, yeah. If it's benevolent, it doesn't give a damn about our morality, perhaps. But yeah. that there, I think that there could be some benevolent design beyond our, our, our scope of understanding. But having said that, like, I still think that religion has left such a vacuum for a lot of people where it suddenly got taken out of our constellation of society mm -hmm. and so the idea that we could be projecting it onto onto other places it's pretty wild but when you think about the just the the sharp like you know just like you said there i yeah but i'm a little bit fuzzy on that i'm you know i'm a bit lukewarm on that what you're lukewarm on that you're one of them now. Yeah. You, you know like yeah, it's been crazy cast out. yeah 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 it, it um I, I was also raised Catholic. Uh, my dad is still very Catholic. He's a Knight of Columbus. We have a, you know, we have a lot of conversations about that. But I understand, even just looking at him, he's retired. His community yeah. is 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 there. That's where he gets out of the house. He volunteers. He he has friends that he has to see once a week. And 
And by contrast, you know, people who don't have that, but that the religion offers him that. The religion offers him community yeah. and it offers him companionship and it offers him uh, like-minded people that he can share an experience with. And I think we're all looking for that. We all want Absolutely. that. And what's happened though, is that we've created it in places that, um, or we've created it in ways that make it difficult for us to experience the divine part of it because yeah. we're just too worried about good and bad, you know, good and evil, heaven and hell in the ways that we've created it. And I too believe in, in div div I believe in something, you know, um, I believe yeah. that something exists uh, because art exists and music exists and, and, and babies exist. Even though I'm not a very big baby person. I mean, I'm, I'm sure yours will be lovely, but like these, <laughs> like these, these innocent things that are these, these things that like us, uh, today was a, a walk day. Um, and I was taking a walk around the neighborhood and I just saw like this, this lady with her dog. And I was like, that's just, she loves that dog. <laughs> it's just like, I love that for her. Like, I love the fact that she, she seems so happy with this creature that she has and what created the creature? Like, you know, what, what, what creates this, this, this love that we have for each other? Like that's something. And I think that at a very early age, I, I realized that we, you know, we made God in our own image. And, and, and some of that is like, we're not really nice, you know, and we like to punish people and we want to make sure that they, that they know that they've done something wrong and they're going to pay for it. Um, but I don't believe that the, 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 the God I, the God I serve, this is old, <laughs> this is Catholic shit coming in, but the, the, yeah. the, 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 the divine thing entity that I believe in is not worried about who you voted for, you yeah. know, is not worried yeah. about things like that. It's, 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 it's busy creating love for this dog and this woman and, and making me really happy to see that, even though it has nothing to do with me, I have no connection to that. Um, but is, yeah. isn't that though, uh, I, I don't know, there's like, um, you know, you just mentioned before that the, the hurting people and almost why they seek to find um community and maybe in places where it's not offering us that maybe that uh maybe the the wholesome aspect of even or the a more whole in integration even as to what you're saying your father's experience is with a community on a number of different levels yeah um but it, it that's the thing that i find amazing sometimes is just you know, I can sit here talking to you. I've never chatted to you before. I'm enjoying the hell out of talking to you. And I'm like, oh, this life's, life's pretty sweet sometimes, right? You know, and, you know, you're mentioning the dog there. I have, I have my own dog. I can relate to that lady as well. I'm like, of course, that's beautiful. Yeah. And then the hurt that exists in people. This is like, I, I don't know, there's something, there is something almost poetic about the existence of life, even in the, even in, area, in aspects of it that we just think are completely mundane. Yeah. Like there's just, there's almost something so perfectly twisted about it do, do you get me like it's yeah. it's there's something i can't quite i can't quite kind of put my finger on but it, it like it, like i feel like i'm suspended in that that oscillation if you know what i mean yeah i it's it's interesting because when you're able to see the love or or, or see why somebody experiences love for their child, their dog, their barbell, I don't know. I don't know, what just whatever. Um you can also understand or I feel like you can also understand where the hurt and the hate comes from. And I'm not quick to dismiss people that are no. I'm not quick to involve myself in people who are hateful or hurtful or, you know, racist, sexist, homophobic, whatever. But if you sit long enough with them, you see where it's coming from. And then you recognize that they projected it onto this when it's all, when it's something else. And I feel like if we took a little bit more time to say, oh, this person is afraid, they're afraid. And the person that they blame for that fear is someone that looks like this. And they found a community of people who are also afraid of something and have decided that this is a reason why it is. And 
if we took a little bit more time to understand that, and I'm not saying that anybody needs to put themselves in like in a dangerous situation or in a harmful situation or, a, a, you know, a, a place where they're not comfortable, um, it, you know, having these conversations or, or what have you. Um, but I do say, I do think just knowing that is important and just knowing that is enough to, is enough to, it's just enough to understand that that person is going through something that doesn't have anything to do with me. They think it has something to do with me, but I know it doesn't. So I'm able to navigate that. Um, my, my son is learning to drive. He, he, uh, he has a dr driver's permit and I'm not a great driver. I'm a terrible driver, but I'm, I'm good at instructing. But when I'm in the car with him and he's driving, <laughs> when I'm in the car with him. Sorry, I, I just had a flashback to me telling my wife and vice versa how we each other drives. <laughs> so not, Yeah, I, I know. But I know we're, both, we're both wonderful instructors as well. <laughs> right. Because, you, know, you know, if you don't know how to do something, you know what you're not doing. <laughs> you can tell somebody yeah. how to do it correctly. Um, but as he's driving, he's like, he, he looks down at the the speedometer and I'm like look at the road ahead of you don't worry about the cars next to you they have to worry about themselves in a way but as long as you're doing what you're supposed to do they too will sort of see that they don't have to swerve because you swerve because you're 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 facing forward you're if you need to see the speed limit and you see a the, the sign then you look down, but you look right back up again, but only to gauge and measure where you are and, and whether or not you're in the right space. But you cannot, you cannot put yourself in a situation where all the other cars have to be so aware of you that they can't do what they need to do. And you can't be so aware of the other cars that you're not doing what you need to do. And when I was telling him this, he was like, okay. But, <laughs> but to me, it just seems like, it, it also just feels like a way that we should live our lives, you know, like be aware, be mindful, um, be cautious, be helpful, but also don't take your, your, okay. Now I've lost my metaphor. I was gonna no, say, don't no, take but, your hands off there's... the wheel. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. Exactly. Exactly. <laughs> don't do that. Either. You heard that people, you heard that people <laughs> don't take your hands off the wheel. But no, but there's something, there's something though that you're saying here that I, I really, I, I really think is important. The, I, the awareness that a lot of times when people maybe are afraid how we try to project certainty of why they feel, why they feel discontent in their lives and how, how like erroneous that usually is when it's coming from a place of fear, because it's such a powerful emotion. Yeah. And 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 I think it's a really, I don't know, like it's a really curious, like, and I mean, like it's a place full of curiosity that you can still look at someone's projections from that place of fear and go, this person is afraid. But ultimately, I, I think that's like whatever the, whatever the experience may be, like I really usually, like I really think that is mostly where this come, like mostly where a, a whole array of things in our in our society come from. We're afraid of different things, you know. Yeah. And I think on this podcast, I've had different even people that are death doulas, and we've explored the concept of death. And even you know, that's something we're massive in a, in in Western cultures that we're massively afraid of. Yeah. You know, the idea of how closed and rigid we are even around death, even though we all know it's coming. Yeah. And I, I, I don't know, I think that there's, there's, and then even the things that you've been talking about here, just the depth of your own, you know, a doctor saying to you, you're almost too self-aware, or I think when a certain amount of mindfulness or awareness comes into somebody's life, you just, you end, I, I think you can end up holding some of these uncomfortable, like you can start looking inward with some of these, these, this pain or this hurt, whereas most people and that's not a judgment on people. Like, I think we all come to it whenever life kind of pre 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 presents us with very little option, but to look at it. Yeah. Um, but it's when we start to explore that, that we have then can have the capacity to go, maybe this is a little bit more complicated, or maybe there's something behind what looks very simple on the surface or straightforward on the surface. Yeah. And I, I believe that everything's a little bit more complicated than, than we know, because no one knows the full extent of what anyone's going through, even the person going through it doesn't know the fullest extent of what it is that they're going through. I, I feel like life is both simple and complicated. I think there are aspects of, of life that we overcomplicate 
And then there are aspects of life that we oversimplify. And quite often nice. we, we exchange them. Um, and I, ooh, do you hear my stomach growling? <laughs> 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 I haven't eaten. Um, okay. Uh, yeah, I, I, so much of, 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 of what ails us comes from a place of fear. I think so much of, um, like you mentioned, the death doula. There are people who are so terrified of death that they'll do anything to avoid it to the point where they're not enjoying life at all. You know, um, yeah. I, I, I work out because it helps with my mental health and also gives me good arms. But because uh, I, I, I want to look a certain way and I, and I like the way I feel and. But then there are people who work out in order to prevent, you know, aging or to prevent, you know, um, because somebody told them that they'll, they'll live longer because, and, and it's like, you're not eating, you're not, you're not living, you're not going out, you're not experiencing the, the life that you have because you're trying to avoid the death that is inevitable. And, and that's fear. And I understand the fear because there are a lot of things that I'm afraid of. Um, and a lot of that fear I've had to find ways to to work around and still acknowledge that the fear exists but also know that the fear doesn't control me and the fear doesn't 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 precede me the fear doesn't come before I show up and I think a lot of people are projecting that fear the fear is showing up before they do and people are are interacting with the fear that you've projected and not you. Yeah. And then you take it personally because now you think people are start acting a certain way, not knowing that you, that this fear has walked into the room before you. And so they're not dealing with you. They're dealing with that. And um, yeah, I, I just think that so much of, of, in a very Pollyanna way, so much of what we need is, is to understand that we all have a, a certain amount of fear that sometimes walks in the room before us. And learning how to, to sort of wrangle it, still have it, you know, we all are afraid of something, but knowing that that fear doesn't run us and, and, and knowing that that fear doesn't, um, also doesn't give us the right to hurt people, you know? Yeah. Yeah. I, I love this idea of, um, almost like a, a layer of fear existing around us and then, almost like an outer shells before you like, you almost have to penetrate the fear before you get to the humanity. Yeah. And if it, if it line, if it comes in front of us, it, 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 it hits or interacts with somebody else's fear before I even get to see the, the human that exists in front of me. Yeah, And then we're just knocking fear against each other. Yeah. And, and, and I guess where can it go then at that point? There's, there's a lovely kind of theme though, that's, going through i think what some of what you're saying here is just you know a lot a lot of times i think even just the way mindfulness and meditation like uh, i've meditation has become important for me in my life and even journaling and different things like this and just even sitting and just noticing what's happening in my body in my body i guess at any stage when i started off on this i became quite like vigilant uh sorry vig uh, i became a bit of a vigilante not vigilant <laughs> um, in that like telling everyone that they should meditate so i was that annoying person for for maybe a year but it became your your, and, your religion you were evangelizing yeah 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 a absolutely yeah yeah yeah, yeah. Uh, and um but the one but I, I i had an idea almost like of a perfect version of myself in my head but what I'm starting to notice more and more is that what it really, the real gift that it gives me is the ability to kind of acknowledge and name what is here. Mm -hmm. And so it's not a question that when I fear, when I feel fear, that it's not that I'm, I'll still, I won't be prone whatsoever to some irrational behavior, but I'll be aware that I'm influenced in an irrational way and I'll be able to communicate that to somebody else. Yeah. And and I think just with so much of you've been you've been saying so far, it's like, okay, look, I'm not perfect, but some something beautiful is is happening in the sense of I'm I have a capacity to name how I'm feeling, what's here, and and maybe even some awareness around why it potentially is here. 
you know, it's not, none of this is about being perfect, but it's just continuously being able to name what is and check in with what is. And, and I think that even leaves us with uh, the possibility of becoming aware, but remaining human. Yeah. Yeah. It's, it's never about not feeling things or, or, or not experiencing things. Like, I just want to say that I, as much as I've dealt with, you know, a lot of the, the bipolar two and hypomania, all that stuff, I still have a lot of anxiety. Like anxiety is something that I'm still working on, but because I'm still working on it, I'm also very, um, I make sure that it's, it's, that my irrational anxiety, I'm not forcing to make rational for other people. Um, it's, it's up to me to figure out where it's coming from and, and figure out, you know, why it shows up, why it's shown up like this way. So, so extremely today, as opposed to, you know, yesterday when, when I wasn't really worried about anything or, or I was, the worry was like at a very, at a, at a minimum, um, but just just going back a little bit to what you're saying about meditation and 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 we we want when something works for us and when something feels good to us we want that for other people you know we want we yeah. want that like like we want them to also experience it we want them to also uh, this goes it goes back to religion you know i found this thing that makes me feel good that that has turned my life around you know, whether it be Jesus or yoga, we, we talk about it the same way. We talk yeah. about it the same way. And I, I don't think there's anything wrong with that until we get to the part where, you know, we start punishing people and creating apocalypse and, you know, all these different things. Yeah. In terms of, I was a super curious then in terms of even how, you know, this, your experience with, you know, coming up with different coping strategies or mechanisms around um, bipolar two and, and the way you're approaching life, how has that influenced your, your work? Like how, how much of an outlet or uh, like your, what's your relationship like through this with, with your writing then? Cause uh, I don't know, there seems to be, I was looking at some various quotes from from your book i'm telling the truth but i'm lying and even that title in of itself is just like i think it's just beautiful like you, you know just the i think it captures a lot of life like how has creativity been a big part of of your i know it was always part of your process you know your your how you're showing up in life but how is that i guess like altered or shifted or 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 even presented itself through through some of your creativity then um, because I, I spend so much time thinking about myself, um, uh, <laughs> um, <laughs> I'm able to, one of, one of the best compliments that I've received or I, I, I receive about my work is that when people say, I didn't know how to say that, or I didn't know, I didn't know what that thing was, but you explained it in a way that makes sense to me because I've experienced it or now I understand what my partner's been going through. Um, I, uh, an excerpt from my book was in, uh, published in the New York times. Um, and I got this email from this woman who was her, whose son, um, was dealing, I think with a lot of anxiety and insomnia, just couldn't sleep. And her thing was just like, I just, I don't understand. Just go to bed, you know, just, just, lie down and close your eyes and sleep will happen eventually. And the excerpt was, was a, was a, was about all the things that I was going through my mind when I couldn't sleep one night. And it was just like this continuous loop and conversation and this thing and going from here to there and starting in one place and ending in another place. And like constantly, constantly, you know, just, just looping and all these things. And she's like, I didn't know, that all that stuff or all of something was going on in his head. I didn't know that that was what he was experiencing. And now I have a better understanding of that. So where I'm trying to understand myself and trying to write things down so that it's clearer for me, I write so that I make sense of myself or make sense of the world. And I hope that when I write that somebody else, at least one other person, 
can relate to it or point to it and say, okay, yeah, me too. That's, that's what it means. Like, that's what it means. That's what it feels like. That's where, that's where I am or where I end up when I'm experiencing these things. Um, so writing for me has always been a way to understand myself in the world around me. Um, and there, there's two things. There, there are people who believe that specifically bipolar disorder and specifically like mania and hypomania, they think that that's the creative part. They think that's the creativity. So they're very afraid of, of doing anything to take that away. And what I've learned and what I believe is that the mania is not the creativity. The mania is the production. So back in the, back in the day, um, I will write, you know, 40 poems in a, in a, in a, in a night, in a 24 hour span. Um, but only three of them will be any good. Or I can write, you know, four poems in, in a, in a week and only three of them are any good. So I end up with the same three poems. It's just one of them, you know, was in the middle of this storm that was happening. And the other was, you know, at a pace that, that, that makes a little bit more sense. Um, so once I unlearned this idea that my creativity was not born inside of this this, this storm that I was going through, um, it helped me get to a place where I was writing from outside of it and being able to you know describe it and to to to, to place it someplace else. I don't know if that if that's clear. Yeah, um, the idea, could you elaborate though, even just on the idea of writing outside of it as opposed to in the storm? Well, in the middle of it, when you're experiencing it, you only see it from that vantage point. Uh, okay, let me let me back up. Uh, my book is written in, in, in first person, second person, and third person. Like it just, sometimes within the same essay, it, it delves into, it, it switches from first to second or second to third. Um, and that's because there are aspects of my life that because I was in it, I don't know what happened because there was just so much. And that's where the title comes from, telling the truth, but I'm lying. Like, I'm, I think this is what happened. I'm pretty sure, but I can't be a hundred percent. So maybe I'm lying about a little bit of it, but I, I'm just getting to a point. I think that we rely, this is an aside, but I'll get back to it. We rely too much on like chronological memory. Like people put much more much more importance on chronological memory and less on emotional memory. And I think emotional memory is just as important, if not more. It doesn't matter if it happened on a Tuesday or, or, or in May. What happened is, what's important is how the experience made you feel and how you felt about it and what that, that, that emotion carried and where that brought you to. And it, it, does, it doesn't matter if it happened on a Friday. It just doesn't. Um, but going back... So in the book, there when I'm writing in the I in the first person, it's because I, I'm I'm this is what I'm experiencing. But because of the nature of of how we process certain things and how we remember things, um, I have to pull myself out and look at it from a they and a you, where it's like, okay, I can see it clearer now because I'm looking at somebody else. It's it's I'm, as if it's as if I'm telling somebody else what happened to that person. And because of that, I, I see it from a different vantage point. I'm able to describe it from a different different ang um, um, angle and vantage point, which makes the story fuller, which makes the writing fuller, which makes the the experience I'm trying to convey um, become much more lived in and much more lifelike. Because I think that a lot of writers tend to fall in, we fall into the poetry of it. And we fall into how good something sounds and this sounds great. It's just so lovely how, how I said that. And, you know, but it doesn't really, it doesn't really tell the story. It doesn't really capture the moment. And in order to capture a moment, we need to see it from, from different angles. So there are things that I can't see because I'm living in it, but there are things that I can see because I'm living in it. I can describe to you what insomnia feels like, but then I can step out of it and I can show you what it looks like. I'm like, whoa, that looks, that's, that's a lot. And I can write about how, how, um, how exhausting it is because I'm watching it. Like when I'm in it, I'm not tired, but I'm looking at it. I'm like, whoa, that's, 
that's why I'm I'm so tired, or that's why I can't sleep, or that's why because I'm able to to you know, uh, to bring myself in and out of those moments. Yeah. Yeah. This is um. But that's uh, I th- I think that's a real like almost gift to develop. I because even the the implications of being able to shift perspective like that. I think are so helpful to human relationships as well. Like, I don't know if you've ever had the experience of, you know, maybe having a problem with someone for quite a long time and then finally being able to almost extricate myself from the story so I can just hear their story. Yeah. And that in itself just opens up so much space or understanding. Yeah. So the, so the the way you're describing this it just sounds like a i don't know like a really stunning way in which to observe life like or to to understand life yeah i'm i'm just bringing that uh, i recently uh reconnected with uh with an ex boyfriend someone that hurt me like i've never experienced and will never experience again and i've carried the story of that for a decade and the story of that is this person did something to me this person, you know, uh, 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 caused this thing that that affected me in this way, and so being able to hear his version of it, and I was going through this, and I didn't mean to do that, but the consequences of what I did was, and I'm sitting here like, this whole time I thought you were just out to get me. <laughs> this whole time yeah, yeah. I thought either I'd done something so horrible that the only recourse was to damage me in this way. Or, you know, I had all these stories that I've told myself about, about the last decade and to hear, to hear the story from another side and, and still being able to say that hurt, but I also understand the hurt that moved you towards that hurt. I also understand the story that you told yourself in order to, 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 to get to that point. Um, And having, and being able to like, I don't think we can always place. Our, I think that's that's a fortunate thing that I that 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 I've experienced. I don't think everybody goes through that, and I don't think that it's necessary to seek that out all the time. Um, but I've I've been fortunate in my life um, to always be in a position where I'm able to see multiple sides or 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 take responsibility for something, which allows somebody else to give me their perspective. Um, on on the same thing, and it's and it's usually different. It's usually, well, before I saw you, I almost got hit by a car, so I was really pissed off and really, you know, scared when I saw you, and so I took that out on you, and then you're taking it out on me, so I took it back. You know, I'm taking it back on you too, and so now we're having this this conflict with each other that is not about anything that 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 we've experienced together. It's what we brought to it, like you know. I almost got hit by a car and I'm scared and you're late. So now I'm mad at you and I'm late because something happened to me, but like I brought that to you and now we just hate each other because of stuff that had nothing to do with, 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 with one another. Oh man, to be a human. Hey, (laughs) I mean, like, like what's it like being a dog? Like, what is that like? Because because this is very complicated and it takes so much thought just to be, it takes so much work just not to be a crappy person. Like, you know, yeah. it just takes so much work. Yeah. Like sometimes I wish I could be like, no, I'm going to be awful. It's like, no, I'm going to apologize yeah. to the customer. Like, and, and not to, <laughs> but not to misinterpret the first line you said, um, you know, am I like, am I going to be okay? But like, even just when you said, how much work does it take just to be like an okay human? If you, when you, when you think about it, like it's, it's, you know, that thing you said earlier, the idea of sometimes we over, we over, or life can be simpler, it can be, and it become, can be complex. And sometimes we oversimplify, sometimes we over uh, make it overly complex. Mm -hmm. And sometimes we miss, misinterpret when those, when either for, when either interpretation would be helpful. But I, I don't know. I, and, and I agree with you. Look, I, just because I've been able to, in one circumstance, extricate myself out of somebody's story, there's many there's many other subplots that are going on even right now where I'm sure I'm not doing that. But yeah. hopefully I can I can have some grace at some point in the future to have time to reflect on this, because a lot of what we're talking about is, 
you know, sometimes it, depending on the the rush of life and everything that's going on or how overwhelming life may be or how how chill we may feel, whatever state we may be in, we have different capacities for these. But I just think that that's so important that even people contemplate that it's, it, it is possible. And, and it, sometimes it doesn't need to be so complicated in that you could just ask somebody like, how are you like how are you feeling or is there something else going on you know not even some deeply insightful or profound question but just to give each other some form of benefit of the doubt sometimes that it may not be just all what it seems and i i think when you mentioned the idea there of just taking responsibility for something i i think this is a really nice way in for anyone listening just if you know, if you take some part of responsibility in any kind of conflict or dynamic or misunderstanding, the other person may just double down or dunk on you and just say, "Yeah, you are this," you know, and you are. But a lot of times, people can kind of go, "Ah, they're not coming at me anymore. Yeah. They're not like perceiving us as attacking them." And they may you just even open up. I think the the best sometimes we can do for each other is just open up spaces for the possibility of seeing different perspectives. You yes, know? yes, and that that is exactly that's firmly what I believe. Just leave the leave the space for for the conflict to be resolved. Um, there's just too many short shot uh, shot. There's too many shut doors that that are shut prematurely. I believe. Um, I I. I when you were talking, I was also thinking like, you know, have grace for yourself if you're not there yet, because it's not, it, it might take a little bit more for you to get to that place. Um, I just, I just want people to be able to do that at times. Don't use the same conflict resolution technique for every conflict. Not yeah. everybody, like maybe one person hurt you or, or, or meant to hurt you. And that's terrible. But taking that out on the one person, like not everybody is coming to you uh, the same way for the same reason, yet just leave room for people to be different and leave room for people to have a different experience than you and for you to experience people differently. Yeah, there's something you said earlier that I actually just wrote down because it's a quote that I might steal. All yours. (laughs) (laughs) But just like almost like, to under like to to acknowledge your own hurt, but to understand the hurt that drove somebody else to the place where they may have done something to you, and and I, and I think, you know, we during the course of this conversation, you've touched on many different things in terms of even, you know, first of all, like it, just this idea of am I going to be okay that investigation, but also then just the contributing to society and and so much of I think of what we've even been talking about then is just like developing some sort of kindness for ourselves and for others, even when we still may lose our shit, yeah. Like, yeah. You, you know what I mean? Even acknowledging that that may happen, you know, just developing this kind of grace, seeing the humanity in other people. Like, you know, you were talking about the level of the influence of mindfulness and the self-reflection on yourself makes it easier to see other people, but even just seeing other people, seeing through the, you know, this kind of fear, um, you know, layer that we've discussed that oftentimes people are connecting from that place of their fear connecting rather than their their humanity connecting. Like all the things that we can do, perhaps whether it's through mindfulness or awareness or whatever it may be, just to to be able to, to cultivate these spaces or opportunities or moments where we can afford somebody else grace, but also to perhaps maybe extricate ourselves from the, the the story that we're telling that we may be able to see it from another perspective. Yeah. And, you know, I love this idea that, you know, the world is so full of so much love, like the lady with the dog, um, you know, it just so many beautiful moments in life where there is so much love present, but there is also just an acknowledgement that there is so much hurt in the world as well. And just to, not that we're going to fix everything, but, and there's a, some utopia out there, but just that we're consistently acknowledging this or seeing this, that this is also a, a, a layer of life that we can't always just push away or, or dismiss yeah. and, and just write somebody off. Like you were even talking about in, even in the, the political debate spectrum, where if somebody doesn't agree with me a hundred percent that they're, they're going to hell or they're in heaven with me or, yeah. you know, this could, this kind of idea. Yeah. It's, it's all about Basi, harm. Oh, sorry. But can I just share yeah, one? Yeah, no, please. Can I just share one yeah, last yeah, thing with please. you? 
Um, so literally minutes before I logged in for this conversation, I read something, a text message that upset me. And I took a moment and I was like, I'm meeting you for the first time. So there's no reason for me to give you whatever it is I read in that text message. You know what I mean? Like, there's just no reason for me to give you that. That's not, you, you didn't give me, you didn't send it to me. So I, yeah. I just want to, with all my corny Pollyanna thing, I just want to know that there are things that, that there are things that upset me and there, there, I get upset and I want to, you know, as soon as we're done, I might, I might shoot off a very bad text message back. Yeah, yeah, um, yeah. But right now you don't deserve that part of me. You don't, you hadn't, you haven't earned or, or, or done anything to deserve the part of me that's angry for any reason, but I'm, I'm still angry in here, Yeah, but yeah. that's not your fault. You didn't, you didn't do that. Yeah. So I think that if we, if we moved a little bit more in that direction, um, again, like you said, it's not going to be utopia, but it's just going to be a little bit better. You know, it's just, just a little yeah. bit better than it is. You know, we're, we're going to smile at each other a little bit more. Um, even if you don't want to smile at somebody else, you, you also don't want to punch them in their face, you know? <laughs> yeah. That's, that's the tagline, right? <laughs> <laughs> like, as I, just, a, just aware of the time that we're coming up to and just how I usually finish these conversations, obviously, is with the question of, um, Basi, what, what, what is a good life for you? <sighs> what is a good life for me? A good life for me is where my baseline is contentment and anything other than that is just beautiful, just the icing on the cake. Um, and also, again, just causing as little harm as I possibly can and making sure that I, I leave people better um, than they met me, just a little bit better you know yeah well not to sound too corny myself you've left me a little bit better oh, I appreciate, <laughs> than, you have left me too I appreciate that I appreciate that and look I've I've really uh I've really enjoyed discovering your work in the last few months uh, I really I'm really looking forward to continuing to follow it um I've taken I think you've you've shared so many fascinating perspectives in this conversation for me and, and anyone listening as well uh, so look, just thank you very much for joining us here in the What Is a Good Life podcast, and and I wish you some grace with whoever you're about to text. When we end <laughs> I, this. I'll be calm about it. I'll be calm about it. No, wait, I just, let me let me thank you. This has been a, a a wonderful, lovely conversation. So many I, I get asked to do a lot of podcasts, and they tend to like sort of lean into like let's talk about the depression, let's talk about you know the time when this thing happened. So being able to have a conversation with somebody who wants to know what the good parts is. It, it's, it's fantastic. This is an amazing podcast and I can't wait to, to share it with other people. So thank you for being and doing what it is that you do. So. Thank you so much for that. <laughs> that has made my day. <laughs> <laughs>